Welcome to the tutorial on branch accounting. What is branch? Branch can be defined as the section of an enterprise. I mean it's a part of a company or section of a company that is geographically separated from the rest of the business and generally a branch is controlled by the head office and the branches carry on the same activities as of the enterprise in case of a growing business i mean in a large company there may be lots of branches in different towns and cities and in this tutorial we are going to learn how to prepare the accounting for a branch as we have already said that branch is a section that's why it's not a separate legal entity that means it's a segment of a business that's why from the perspective of accounting a branch is clearly identifiable profit center that means a branch is a profit center for a large entity in order to exercise greater control over the branches it's essential to ascertain profit and loss made by the branches separately that means since branch is a segment that's why it's essential to find out the profit and loss from those branches and that is why there should be a specialized accounting techniques that should be adopted to control the branches by the head office and for this purpose the branch level and the head office level accounting system should be adopted that is why there is a necessity to have branch accounting though a branch is typically located at distance places but they are controlled by the head office and all the activities are done by the direction and control of head office that is why it is necessary that the head office and the branch obtain information from either side at regular intervals that means for preparing branch accounting both the head office and the branch should maintain information and should produce available information to calculate the profit and loss from those branches that is why the head office and the branch should keep proper books of accounts from this slide we can know that what are the necessity to prepare the branch accounting we can see if we can prepare branch accounting we can ascertain the profitability of each branch separately for a particular accounting period we can also ascertain the financial position of each branch separately at the end of the accounting period we can also incorporate the profit and loss made by the branch and we can also know the assets and liabilities in the firm's final accounts from branch accounting we can assess the progress and performance of the branch there is also the part of audit requirement because under the audit requirement there is a necessity to show the segment reporting and that's why branch accounting will provide the reporting or financial information of the branch from the branch accounting we can ascertain the amount of stock and value of stock and amount of cash maintaining by the branch we can also get the information about the rate of return on capital that was invested in that branch and based on this information we can decide whether we should expand branch or we should close the branch as always from the 
branch accounting, we can ascertain the quantity of stock held by each branch at the end of the accounting period. And last but not the least, we can ascertain the amount of commission that should be paid to the manager who manages the branch. And that commission can be calculated whenever we can calculate the profit. And for calculating the profit, we need to apply the branch accounting for each branch. What are the types of branches? We can see broadly, we can classify the branches into two categories. One is home branches, another one is foreign branches. And there are two types of home branches. The first one is dependent branches, another one is independent branches. Generally, the dependent branches are controlled by the head office and everything is decided by the head office for the dependent branch. On the other hand, the independent branches keep their own accounting based on the judgment of the manager of the independent branch. And we can see the foreign branches are generally situated in a foreign country which independently record the transaction based on the foreign currency. However, from this figure we can see broadly there are two types of branches. One is home branches, another one is foreign branches. In case of home branches, there are two categories. One is dependent branches, another one is independent branches. As already I have told you, that the dependent branches are controlled by the head office. All the policies, all the administrative decisions are imposed by the head office. And we can see there are two types of dependent branches. One is service branches, another one is retail selling branches. Generally, the service branches act for booking orders on behalf of head office as well as the service branches execute orders from head office. In case of retail selling branches, the head office transferred the goods from the head office at cost or at loaded or invoice price or at wholesale price. Generally, the service branches act as a expenditure center because they act in booking and executing the orders. The accounts relating to these types of branches consist mainly of expenditure accounts such as salaries, wages, traveling and miscellaneous expenses. At the initial stage, the branch manager received a small fund which is known as petty cash fund and whenever there is a expenditure, the head of fish replenish the amount of cash which was spent by the manager. That's why the branch manager is required to submit periodical expenditure statement to the head office. After receiving the expenditure statement, the head office forward a replacement check for the total amount of expenditure. For proper controlling purpose, the expenditure returns are analyzed and the total of each type of expenditure are debited to the branch expenditure account and credited to the branch cash account by the head office. At the time of preparing the final accounts by the head office, the different branch expenditure accounts are transferred to the profit and loss account of the head office. For the retail selling branches, the head of not only maintains all the accounting records but also the head of manufactures or purchases the products that is known as stock in bulk quantity. It is often found that to maintain a good accounting information, both the head of and the branch of should undertake all bookkeeping and accounting work as required because without available information, it's not possible to maintain a good accounting system. 
that's why the branch office should regularly returns the information about the operations from the branch this practice is very useful for those organization which operate on a large scale with lots of branches and each branch practically being no more than a sales depot or selling outlet that means in retail selling branches the branch act as a sales depot that's why the branch office should regularly provide the information about the transaction made by the branch office now we are going to learn about the features of retail selling branches we can see in the retail selling branches a separate record of branch assets liabilities revenues and expenses is maintained by the head office the branches maintain the records of sales and pretty expenses only but sometimes the branches also maintain the accounts of debtors they also maintain the stock register all the documents originating at the branches should be transferred to the head office and the head office transfer the goods at a cost price or the loaded or invoice price that means the branch manager has no any discretion or any power to fix the selling price the price is fixed by the head office the price may be based on the cost price or loaded or invoice price generally the head office provides the goods to the branch that's why branches are not allowed to buy any goods locally from the open market goods are generally sold by the branch in cash but sometimes there may be credit sales but generally credit sale is not permitted by the head office but if there is a scope the branch can sell the goods on credit by taking the permission from the head office the amount collected from cash sales or collected from the debtors should be remitted to the head office immediately or should be submitted to the bank of the head office there is a working fund for the branch that is established and it is also replenished by the head office whenever needed all the major expenses of branch are paid by the head office the branch manager can pay the salaries and wages of the staff he is also allowed to incur petty cash expenses like postage telephone etc however for these expenses head office provides the petty cash fund now we are going to learn about the accounting arrangements for retail dependent branches we can see the accounting arrangement of retail dependent branches depends on the size of the branch types of activities of the branch method of operations by the branch as well as the degree of control that is exercised by the head office there we can see three main methods of accounting for branch transactions the first one is debtor system and the second one is stock and debtor system and the third one is final accounts system the debtor system is suitable whenever the size of the branch is small under this debtor system a branch account is opened for each branch in the head office ledger and all the transactions related to the branch are recorded in this account the branch account is prepared in such a way that it discloses the profit and loss of the branch generally the head office send the goods to the branch either at cost price or selling price the selling price is also known as invoice price that is why the accounting approach for cost price and the accounting approach for selling price are different the accounting for the retail dependent branches can also be maintained by cost price method 
under this cost price method at the beginning of the year the branch account is debited for the opening balances of assets such as stock at cost debtors petty cash furniture prepaid expenses accrued income etc on the other hand the branch account is credited with the opening balances of liabilities such as creditors outstanding salaries rent etc then the branch account is debited for the goods sent by the head office and the other amounts of cash that is remitted by the head office for maintaining the expenses such as salaries rent trades and taxes on the other hand branch account is credited with the return of goods at cost by the branch and the receipts from the debtors and cash sales and the end of the period the branch account is debited with the closing values of liabilities and credited with the closing values of assets the difference between debit side and credit side represents the profit or loss on the branch for the particular period from the previous slide we have learned that the branch account should be debited with the opening balance of asset and the branch account should be credited with the opening balance of liabilities that's why for the opening balances of asset the branch account debit and the individual assets should be shown in the credit as well as the branch account should be credited while showing the liabilities in the debit side for goods sent to branch branch account debit and goods sent to branch account credit we can get a clear picture from this format this is the format of branch account we can see opening balances of assets the branch account debit we can see we have shown the opening balances of asset in the debit side and whenever there is a goods sent the branch account debit so for easy understanding we can get a clear idea from this format and whenever there is a return of goods by the branch to head of fish then branch account credit goods sent to branch account debit and for remittance of check or cash to the branch for expenses branch account debit cash or bank account credit we can see whenever there is a check paid by the head of fish to the branch for the expenses the branch account debit then you can see for cash or check received from the branch by the head of fish cash or bank debit branch account credit we can see whenever the head of fish received the check from the branch for cash sales or collection of debtors that is shown in the credit side of the branch account that's why branch account credit and bank account debit you can see cash or bank account debit branch account credit for the closing balance of asset all the individual assets should be shown in the debit side and branch account credit we can see these are the closing balances of asset that is shown in the credit side of the branch that's why branch account credit and the closing balances of asset are shown in the debit for closing balances of liabilities branch account debit all the liabilities should be shown as credit and for closing goods sent to branch account the journal is goods sent to branch account debit purchase account credit or trading account credit whenever the head of fish collect the materials or goods by trading then purchase account should be credited and whenever the head of fish is a manufacturer the trading account should be credited however for credit sales for normal loss for goods returned by the customers there should be no entry the reasons for no entry will be discussed later however if there is a abnormal loss abnormal loss debit branch account credit and for transferring the abnormal loss abnormal loss credit profit and loss account debit and if there is a insurance claim for that abnormal loss that insurance claim should be debited in this context it should be noted that 
branch account is prepared to know the correct profit of the branch without being affected by any abnormal loss. Whenever there is a bill for us, there should be no entry. As well as for the branch expenses paid by the branch, there is no entry. And for the bad debts, discount allowed to the debtors, there should be no entry. The reasons will be discussed later. And if there is a profit from the branch, then that profit should be credited and branch account should be debited. We can see this is the profit. So profit is shown in the debit side. That's why branch account debit and general profit and loss credit. And whenever there is a loss, there should be opposite journal. We can see branch account credit, profit and loss account debit. We can see whenever there is a loss, this should be shown in the credit side. That's why branch account credit, general profit and loss account debit. This is for loss arising from the branch. So these are the journal entries. For easy understanding, you can get idea about the journal from this format of branch account. We can see branch account should be shown in the debit side for the opening balances of asset for goods sent to branch for the check paid by the head office and for the liabilities as well as for profit. On the other hand, branch account should be credited by the opening balances of liabilities and the check paid by the branch to the head office and goods returned by the branch to the head office as well as the closing balances of asset. And if there is a loss, that should be shown in the credit side. That's why for this item, branch account will be credit and for this item, branch account will be debit. This is the format of branch account that is already discussed while showing the journal entries. We can see these are the particulars that should be shown in the debit side, the opening balances of asset, goods sent to branch by the head office, the check paid by the head office to the branch for the expenses and the closing balances of liabilities. And if there is a profit that should be shown here. On the other hand, the opening balances of liabilities should be shown here. And if there is a payment of check by the branch to the head office, that should be shown here. The payment for cash sales, the payment for cash collection from debtors should also be shown in the credit side of the branch account. And if there is a return from the branch office to head office, that should be shown in the credit side. As well as for the closing balances of assets, the branch account should be credited. That means the closing balances of assets should be shown in the credit side of the branch account. And if there is a loss, that should be shown in the credit side. As already we have discussed that for some items, we don't provide any journal. The items are ignored while preparing the journal or the items are ignored while preparing the branch account. We can see the credit sales, sales return, pet rates and discount allowed, depreciation of fixed assets, petty cash expenses paid by the branch, shortage or surplus of stock, profit or loss arising out of sale of a fixed asset. These are the items that are not considered while preparing the journal or while preparing the branch account. The reasons are discussed in the next slide. There is no need to provide journal entries for this credit sales or other related matters such as sales return, bad dates and discount allowed because branch account is debited with the opening balances of debtors and is credited with the cash received from debtors as well as closing balance of debtors. In the closing balances of debtors, we adjust all the issues such as credit sale, sales return, wet dates, discount allowed. That's why we don't need to repeat these items because in the closing balance of debtors, we adjust all the issues. On the other hand, we don't provide any journal entries for the depreciation on fixed asset of the branch because branch account is debited with the opening balances of fixed asset and credited with the closing balances of fixed asset. 
whenever we are recording the closing balances automatically all the depreciation are adjusted that's why we don't need to repeat this issue i mean this depreciation should not be recorded because we record the closing balances of fixed asset that's why in this closing balance already the depreciation is adjusted as well as the petty cash expenses paid by the branch is not considered while preparing the journal as well as while preparing the branch account because we show the branch account as david with the opening balances of petty cash and the branch account is credited with the closing balance of petty cash and all the expenses paid by the branch is adjusted with the closing balance since already we are going to record the closing petty cash that's why the expenses paid by the branches are not required to show because that expenses were already adjusted in the closing balance of petty cash in the same way whenever there is a shortage or surplus of stock we don't need to consider in the journal or in the branch account because we debit the branch account with the opening balance of stock and we credit the branch account with the closing balance of stock and in the closing balance of stock we adjust all the surplus or all the shortages that's why we don't need to repeat it as well as the profit or loss on sale of a fixed asset is not shown in the journal entries or in the branch account because whenever the asset is sold for cash the branch account is credited with the remittance if it is sold on credit the branch account is credited with the debtor for sale of asset the profit or loss on sale of asset is already included in the amount that is remitted to the head of fish that's why we should not repeat this profit and loss on sale of fixed asset we don't show the purchase by branch because there is no need to purchase by the branch because the goods are transferred from the head of fish that's why the purchase of branch should not be shown in the journal or branch account however from this illustration we are going to learn about the practical process of preparing the branch account we can see from the following information relating to chidagang branch for the year ending 31st march 2018 prepare a branch account in the books of head office we can see the information of opening balances of stock debtors and petty cash goods sent to branch cash sales cash received from debtors goods returned by the branch credit sales these are the checks sent to branch for salaries rent and taxes petty cash and these are the closing balances of stock debtors and petty cash from this information we are going to prepare the branch account in the books of head office so this is the solution i mean this is the branch account of chitagong branch and this branch account will be prepared in the books of head office we can see initially we have to show all the opening balances of assets from the question we can see the opening balances of assets are stock 37500 debtors at branch 75000 and petty cash at branch 750 so in the debit side of branch account we have shown all the opening balances of asset then we have shown the goods sent to branch by the head of fish we can see goods sent to branch is 630000 and that is shown here in the debit side of branch account then we need to show all the check paid by the head of fish to the branch we can see the branch of fish received check for salaries rent and taxes and petty cash from the question we can see the check are sent by the head of fish to the branch for salaries 
rent and taxes petty cash that is shown in the debit side of the branch account initially we have shown all the opening balances then the goods sent by the head office to the branch then all the check that is paid by the head office to the branch is shown here on the other hand in the credit side of branch account we will show the returned goods that is sent by the branch to the head office from the question we can see the goods returned by the branch is 5000 so that is shown here then we have to show all the cash sales and cash received from debtors that is sent by the branch to the head office i mean the branch office provides the check for cash sales or for cash received from debtors and these two amount should be shown in the credit side as well as in the credit side we have to show all the closing balance of asset from the question we can see these are the closing balances of asset we can see stock 62,500 debtors 1,20,000 and petty cash at branch is 500 these are the closing balances of asset that should be shown in the credit side of branch account we can see we have shown returned goods from the branch of fish 5,000 and the cash receipt for cash sales and cash collected from debtors as well as the closing balances in the credit side the total amount is 863,000 but we can see there is a lower amount in debit side that should be considered as profit we can see in the debit side we have shown all the opening balances of asset as well as goods sent by the head office to branch and the checks paid by the head office to the branch for the expenses and the balancing figure is known as profit if the debit side is lower comparing to the credit side that amount is known as profit so general profit and loss is 90,750. So this is the format of branch account. But already we have learned that we don't show some amounts because those amounts are already adjusted in some particular areas. We can see from the question there is a information of credit sales 570,000. This amount should not be shown because we are showing the cash collection from the debtors in this amount the credit sales are adjusted that's why the credit sales should not be shown in the branch account because this amount is somehow included in this cash collection from the debtors that's why we are not showing this amount that is already discussed in the previous slide that we don't show some items because those items are included in any other accounts that are shown in the branch account we can see the credit sales should not be shown here because this amount is somehow adjusted in this cash collection from debtors however this is the format of branch account from this branch account we can see the branch of Jitagong is producing 90,750 as a profit that means it's a profitable branch the head office should continue the operation of Jitagong branch because it's a profitable branch and that is why we need to prepare the accounts for branch office by the head office because the head office is concerned whether they should continue the branch if the branch is profitable they can continue the branch by the head of fish thank you